Tyler, it is a new month. It is time to make some new investments. We've got a couple of stocks that we think are no-brainer buys right now. There might be some people, maybe, that have their tax return money and they're looking to put it to work. Are you ready to talk about a couple of great stock ideas? Let's do some new ones too, because you know, instead of doing all the same old ones again, I think we can trot out some new ideas and maybe give a, a fresh start to spring. Yeah. So in fairness, you've got a new one. I've got an old one that I'm bringing back that we haven't talked about in a while. I'm Jason Hall. That's Tyler Crow. This is Investing Unscripted. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas, we've got a deal for you. Go to our special link. It's fool.com forward slash unscripted. Go to that link. The Motley Fool is going to give you 10 more great stock ideas. Go check out that link. Okay, Tyler, you want to kick us off? Yeah, I'll go first. The company I've been watching for a few months now and become more and more interested over time is Expeditors International of Washington. Kind of a weird name, I get it, but they are basically a freight forwarding and logistics company. To, to give a real like bare bones version of this, say you need to ship something via airplane, let's say, because it's relatively time sensitive. Expeditors International is going to, it finds where there's space on a plane to move something, I guess is the best way to explain it. So it's very much a connections business. You know, the entire value of this business is based on like, who's in the Rolodex? Who can we call and get this thing shipped to somebody else? It's a relatively competitive business, but it's something that they have done spectacularly well for many years. If there's anything that may make people a little apprehensive of the business relative to maybe a couple of years ago is that it's been very profitable for Expeditors International on the Asia Pacific trade. So basically moving things in and out of China relatively fast, but with the kind of the slowdown in Chinese economic activity it hasn't been quite as lucrative as it has been in the past, which is fine. You know, Freight forwarding and businesses like this tend to move in a cyclical nature because of economic activity and industrial activity, which is kind of why, to me, it's a little bit intriguing right now. It's trading for only 23 times earnings, which for me is a little bit on the higher side, but this is typically a business that's valued for much, much higher. It's a very high quality business, and it's a business that, you know, if you go up and down the kind of you know, beyond the balance sheet, but not beyond the financials. It's one that if you read like the proxy statement or read some of its investor relations material, you see a, a, a corporate culture that is, is very unique and, and is one of the reasons that it's so valuable. Because like I said, it's the entire value of this business is a Rolodex. So you really have to take care of your people and make sure you have the right people in line. Their current CEO started as basically like a delivery guy back in the 1980s, worked his way all the way up to the CEO position. And that's been kind of like the nature of this business is like strong corporate culture, bringing up leaders throughout their system. They, every, almost every person at like the managerial level, it has like incentive compensation based on stock and profitability of the business rather than just like a few of the top name CEOs. So everyone almost, you know, down the line is very much in set for the business success. There's a very small handful of businesses that I can think of off the top of my head that do this. And the ones that do tend to do spectacularly well. It's, well. it's pretty amazing what happens when you align the incentives around performance with the things that create value for shareholders and wonderful things can happen. I want to share this on the screen. Expeditors International, the purple line, is dividend growth. They've in, it's increased its dividend. It started the dividend in the mid 1990s. It's increased the dividend to almost 22,000 percent, right, from where it began, and it's generated over 18,000. That's that's a 19 bagger, right? I think is the way to put it. It's been an incredible wealth creator for investors by doing something really well and then incentivizing your people to do things that create value and generate wealth. Yeah, and you know, with a an extremely capital light business like. You don't need to invest much more than office furniture and a, a, a really good phone set. It throws off a lot of cash. And what else can you do with it other than pay a good, strong, growing dividend and you know, make sure that everyone's aligned and doing the right things. And that's it's part of the reason why, for me, this has been a business that I've become extremely attracted to recently and one that I, I very much think I could find in my portfolio sooner than later. Let's go in a different direction. Let's go away from one of those businesses that its values and the people in the Rolodex to one that the value is in the assets itself. It's an incredibly capital intensive business. You ready? Hey, I, I love capital intensive businesses as long as you're buying them at a good price. Well, I think the market's giving us an opportunity. I want to talk about Brookfield Infrastructure. 
This is one of those Brookfield companies. We recently, you and I did a video, we talked about Brookfield Renewable. We think it's moved back onto the list of stocks to buy. I think the same things happened over at Brookfield Infrastructure. This is a company that we've seen evolve, and that's because, well, the nature of infrastructure has evolved, Tyler, and here is what the business currently is made up of. If you were to go back a decade, you would have seen things like timber and toll roads and ports, and they still have some of those things, but they've combined them into one group, transportation broadly, and they've added a couple of big ones, data we see on the right side. That's data transmission and also storage, so data centers. And things like cell phone towers have become a growing part of the business. They've really expanded their ownership in the energy transportation business. You think about moving energy and they've expanded their utilities business as well. I want to share some data from a G20 initiative. It's called the Global Infrastructure Hub. And this is the numbers that we're talking about that we need to see for investment by 2040 from 2007 to 2040. Globally, $94 trillion with a T, Tyler, that's a lot of money that needs to be spent. And of course, a lot of it will be public money, but also a lot of private investments as well. And if there's any one thing that we've learned about the Brookfield entity of businesses, whether it's their alternative asset management business or the subsidiaries like Brookfield Infrastructure that own, manage, and operate these assets is that they're really good at buying. They're really good at deploying capital, being opportunistic, finding places where there's growth and also that they can be patient and lie in wait and invest and create value for their shareholders. Yeah, I mean, it's a business we've talked about quite a bit. And, you know, to the point of infrastructure is not the same as what, it, what, what we used to think it is. Inf Brookfield Infrastructure has done some really interesting deals recently, including a large investment in shipping containers, as well as getting into data centers. And I believe semiconductors? Yeah, that's a, one of the big deals they did. This was in, got a ton of uh, publicity is they are the joint venture partner with Intel for its Ohio fab that they're building that's going to be the contract fab. They're going to own basically half of that facility. Helps Intel with the capital. And it's a great opportunity because it's hard to think about anything in technology that's more important than transistors and chips. And well, guess what? Time to move into that business as well. So last thing, we're talking about valuation. Tyler, you said you got to pay the right price, particularly for these asset heavy businesses. We've got a slide that I want to share here. And Tyler, this is one of those opportunities where we can use something like dividend yield as a bit of a proxy for value because Brookfield Infrastructure Partners, if there's one thing they're really good at, it's paying a stable dividend, growing that dividend over time, counting on it to be there and to be able to grow it. And the yellow line here, well, that's yield. We can see at different times, it's skyrocketed to really high levels. But its historic average over the past decade is about 4.7%. Recent prices get 5.3% yield. That's value. That's an opportunity to buy. That's why I think Brookfield Infrastructure, to buy it now and own it for the long term because of that wonderful growth opportunity, 